It is an extraordinary story. So, so it's 1978, you're on holiday in Cornwall. Uh, you've got your, your parents there and your three brothers. So what do, you, what do you remember of that day? Well, it all starts with, with a memory of that day, a specific memory of running away from where everyone else was on the main beach uh, and going round to a small cove. Uh, and the two of us were just going to have one last swim. We'd even asked permission to have a last swim. Um, so we ran around to this cove and we went there deliberately because the waves were bigger and therefore more fun. We're just going to jump in the waves. And uh, we went into the, into the water. Um, and the, what I have is this memory which has stayed with me is the first thing that happened is the sand, the undertow. It's very difficult to describe um, what it's like if you've only experienced it standing in the shallows and just feeling the sand dragging back out. But here we were almost out of our depth and then it was such a powerful um, sensation mm. of the, the sand going out from beneath your feet that it, 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 it's, it's entirely um, uh, discomforting. You, you, it's as if the world has gone wrong because yeah. you're trying to walk in one direction and then you look up and you're actually were a you, meter you in swimmers? the other direction. Could, could, were you strong swimmers? We were not great swimmers. No. no, we were there to jump the waves. We weren't yeah, there to, to, swim. to swim. And of course you were very young. I mean, you were only 11 yourself and, and he was nine and you noticed he was behind you and he was being dragged out further and further and and in the this horrible tragedy of this story was that you, you couldn't get to him safely. There was no way that you could get to him. Um, well, this is part of where the memory becomes um, slightly unclear. As I remember uh, realising that the only way to get back in would be to swim. Is that your natural instinct is to put your foot down, but every time you put your foot down, you actually end up further out. Mm. Um, so I remember shouting to him, swim, you have to swim. But by that stage, somehow he was further out than me. Uh, and I remember him desperately trying to doggy paddle and just his, his head above the water and his oh, lips gosh. clamped, closed, just pa panicking. We both um, had this reaction. We knew we were in danger. Um, and I realised that I was going to be in the same state as him very, very soon. And I made a conscious decision, which I remember absolutely clearly, that I had to get back in or I would die. Yeah. And the problem with that was that I had therefore had to leave him in the water. Which, which had the... Terrible consequences. Uh, you got your back. The uh, lifeboats called, um, and uh, and and sadly he he drowned. Um, his body was later found. Um, when did your parents tell you that what had what had happened, and that in fact that you were you gathered round the table and said, "I'm so sorry, but you know we we don't have your brother anymore." Uh, well, we would have known when they came back from the hospital which had been later on that afternoon i found out later on when i was researching what happened on the day and on, that's why it's the day that went missing because that was the only thing i could remember my memory in the water and i wanted to know what had happened in the day so one of the things i found was his death certificate where and it says on the death certificate dead on arrival um at bude hospital uh, and then my parents would have come back towards the end of the afternoon and told us that he was dead, so that's when we found out. But I've, I've discovered all these things later on, and yeah. in the book, it's that journey of discovery as well to find out what actually happened. But you didn't, you didn't, because then the family, if you go back, you've got to go back, you leave Cornwall, you go back for the funeral, which the children weren't allowed to go to, um, and then you go back to Cornwall, and because there was a week left of the holiday, go back and continue the, ho the holiday. But that was it, never discussed again. Well, when we, again, this extra week we went, this week we went back to the, to, to the place where we'd been on holiday. I didn't know about that. I'd completely blanked that out of my mind, as yeah. my brothers had as well. Yeah. They didn't know this existed. So it was only when I started talking to my mum, um, quite recently when I was writing the book, that she said we'd done this. It was a huge shock to us that we'd done this. It seems like a very strange thing to mm. do. But I think it was, in some ways, it was very defiant of them. They wanted to say, look, we, life has to go on. Um, and I think they had good intentions. Um, and the intention was to say, it was almost like getting back on the horse. So we and have it was to... the only way they thought to survive it, I guess. And it was yeah. your kind of dad that was sort of the ringleader of this in a way, because it was his grief, his way of coping on it, and then that affected the rest of the family. His birthdays were never discovered, you, uh, never discussed. Um, the anniversary of his death was never talked about. You never visited the gravestone. And, and it was when your father passed away, sadly, that then you felt able to revisit all of this. Um, was your mum finally relieved to be able to talk about it? 
I think she was very relieved, yes. I'm sure when, the reason I found out the date, because I blocked out the actual date, my mum hadn't forgotten the date. She'd just been suffering in silence all that time. And I think it was a huge relief for her to, to uh, talk about it. But his birthday, for example, we'd also... F I'd forgotten that. My brothers, I think, had forgotten the date. I only found out the date of his birthday from the death certificate. Mm -hmm. So you can see how extreme this had been. But I don't think it was uncommon at that time to, 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 to try and block out grief in this way. It was Has thought it helped, to be the best though, way to move writing on. Writing this and discussing it openly, do you feel like it's helped you deal with your grief better or were you actually doing all right before? Um, I think it has definitely helped me deal with it because the problem with, with moving on uh, is if you don't accept that there are some strong emotions to, to, to process, is that they just wait for you and they'll wait for you and I think at some stage you have to confront it. Which has changed the relationship with your uh, children, hasn't it? I mean, you are much more open. You'll discuss things more than you would have done uh, with your family. Um, I certainly try to, but I think the, the um, general atmosphere has changed about emotion. Yes. We are more... more we have touch. a vocabulary for emotion as well, yeah. which I don't think we had. This is 1978 when this happened. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think this was what, it was just an extreme case of... Stiff up a lip. Pulling yourself together, yeah. Yeah. get on with it. Yeah. And that's something that we now don't admire as much as we did then. But in some ways that would have been admired, I think, at the yeah. time. Yeah, no, you're quite right. This is the story, the day that went missing, a family story, Richard Beard. And thank you very much for coming thank in you, and thank talking you. about it today. Thank you.